In the old days, man tried to catch a glimpse of the future in the strangest of ways. They locked themselves in dark rooms, not partaking of food and drink. At the stroke of midnight, they ventured out into the night, through the dark woods, where strange creatures roamed. To see if they would be wealthy, to be happy, to see if they would live, if they would be loved. Use A or D or left arrows to walk. When there is a path leading north, press W or up arrow to cross it. Okay, this is a little bizarre. This is not what I expected at all. Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen. I'm working to something called Year Walk. Which was recommended by a member of the audience. Is there something flickering? Right, right about here. Is that something flickering as I move left and right? No, I think those are just like little old-fashioned camera errors. This is fascinating. I don't really know what it was that I was expecting, but I don't think I was expecting this. I've never seen a game move quite like this before. What is that? A pizza box? Um. Uh, uh oh. Okay, so it's got lots of little symbols on it. Well, that brought up a symbol that's a little bit like a square. Let me try. No. Okay. This is this is this is this is a little bizarre. I presume I'm going to need some sort of combination for this, or some sort of solution to this problem before I um before I'm able to solve it. What else have we got? We seem to have some pieces of wood here. Excellent, those will, those will make a nice fire so I don't get cold feet. We have here a massive hole in the ground? I don't know, I can't approach it. Let me try going back south. Can I approach this house? No, I can't. Okay. So there's nothing else on this inner plane, for want of better terminology, that I can access. So let me just look around and see if I can see anything which might give me a clue as to what I need to do with that funny box with those bizarre symbols on them. Some buttons up here I didn't see before. There's map, encyclopedia, journal, hints, settings and quit. So what's the map? Oh, I see. So this shows the different planes. The woods and box, yes, the cottage. So these are the different sort of planes that I can be on, and I can move around them in order to access different items and different things. And this is perhaps my goal up here, this big church. Interesting. What have we got in the encyclopedia? I am not going to try and pronounce these names because I will horribly offend whoever is a, is, is a member of the people that speak these languages. They look Scandinavian, but that would be a guess. The Year Walk Encyclopedia is a collaborative effort between these two people who are the authors of the written content. Uh, Theodore was born in Stockholm in 1968, but spent most of his youth in Edinburgh where his mother was born. He graduated from Lund's University in 1992 with a doctorate uh, what? Uh, Owen is a doctor. Get down, I can't even read. At the Facility of Enthanology, his lectures on the manifestations of evil in folklore has been full every term since 1998 onwards. Theodore has written three books on Scandinavian folklore. The Crone's Tongue has been translated into 16 languages and received the prestigious Hornet Award. In 1999, he has numerous appearances in Swedish television and an unaired children's short film called The Grim, which is partly based on Theodore's research. Right, so is this game based around some form of Scandinavian folklore then? So what's this thing? Year Walking was at its core a vision quest with the purpose of being to foresee the future. There were very rigid rules concerning the Year Walk and not adhering to them could prove very dangerous, even fatal. 
How the practice of year walking came to be is shrouded in mystery, but it seems to have been a widespread practice in Sweden until the beginning of the 19th century, and in some rural areas as late as the beginning of the 20th century. The practice was likely over a thousand years old, and most certainly pagan. Year walking varied greatly regionally, and even locally there may have been some differences between one village and the next. All the variations had a couple of elements in common though. A year walk could not be done on any common day. There are certain days in a year when the gates were opened, generally in liaison with important festival days such as May Day, Midsummer's Eve or Christmas Eve, and most commonly New Year's Eve. A year walker could not partake in any of the food or drinks that were served on these days, a sacrifice of no little significance since these feasts were some of the rare occasions when food would be plentiful and varied. A year walker had to avoid other people, so they commonly locked themselves in dark rooms and were not allowed to see a fire for the entire day. Perhaps not a vast sacrifice on Midsummer's Eve, but on the cold winter days it would be uncomfortable at least, if not hazardous. If the year walker followed these steps, he would leave his dark room at the stroke of midnight, and this would be his last chance to cancel the year walk. Once he ventured out, there was no turning back. The church was the final destination for a year walker. On his way, he would typically encounter a number of supernatural creatures, which would pose a threat physically, mentally, and spiritually. If a year walker made it to the cemetery, he would walk around the church in an intricate pattern. This would open the year walker's eyes to the future, but it would also lure out the church grim. After having completed the year walk, the walker would see visions that could manifest themselves in different manners. When the year walker left the cemetery, he may, for instance, see a somber, procession of dancers dressed in their finest church clothes. These would be the people that would die the following year. A recurring theme of course, the year walker who meets his own ghost on the road. Another story of tells how the walker would see newly dug graves. Love played a great part too, so a walker would typically, typically meet wedding processions or even attend weddings yet to come. One testimony from the 19th century tells of a mental patient named Martin Nilsson, who described his visions as otherworldly experiences. Before I saw what happened next year, I lived among the stars. I lived there for many lifetimes, it seemed. What do I care for the next year? Time has already ended. Today the practice seems to be almost entirely forgotten. So is that what I'm doing? I'm on one of these year walks and I've made my way from this cottage which is where I locked myself in the dark room and I'm making my way to the church where I'll see my visions. Interesting. So this, this map implies that there's a way I can move forward along here. Did I just miss that? So that's where these bits of wood are. Oh, I see, because I, it didn't strike me to move left and right when I approached the pieces of wood. So, yes, I'm here now. Okay, so there's more of the world to explore, which will probably explain what I'm supposed to do with this mysterious box. Let's see what else we've got. We've got nothing on the right. Yes, press S to go on paths leading south. So that would lead me onto this part here, another part of the woods. I'm not seeing any other items or paths that I could take northwise. Let's head back south. Again, nothing to the right. Let's head left. This again will take us up to another... I suppose they're a little bit like islands, I suppose, from our perspective, anyway. We got anything else? No, this is a very narrow one. Walking speed can be adjusted in the settings. Oh, that's nice to know. I haven't actually piddled around with those, which is a an oddity for someone like me. Okay, again, nothing to the right. And to the left another area to move forward. So it seems like there's a number more there's a number of other islands around here. There's actually a lot of other little islands around here for want of better terminology. And it seems like there are pathways coming off here, but I can't access those yet. So perhaps things like the box can allow me to unlock a new pathway as it were, which might give me access to new areas. That's my theory at the moment. We have a little windmill. Yes, it would seem so. 
Yes, here we are. Hello, I wasn't expecting there to be any people in this. Left click to interact. There you are. I've been waiting all day. You should not go outside without a hat on a cold day like this. Okay. I mean, if you insist, madam. Yeah. I'm not. And you put it on the wrong way around, and that would have been thoroughly unacceptable. Right, well, I mean, if you insist, if you think this is going to make the game go any better, then um, you'll freeze your ears off. Well, I don't think this one covers my ears much, but it, it, it'll stop me from freezing my hair off anyway, and that's clearly far more important than my ability to hear anything. I am quite fond of the person those ears belong to. Oh, thank you. I know you were very fond of your husband. Don't his ears look good on me? I ripped them off with a saw. Ahem. Did you see anyone coming here? Uh, no. Now you're being silly. You know that I'm not ashamed of you. Wait. Maybe I have gone deaf and I'm just lip reading what she's saying and I can't hear what I'm saying. It's not that. I like you very much. But you and I come from different worlds. He is waiting for my answer. I should give it to him next year. And this is the last day of this year. So is she one of the visions of the people that I'm... I'm seeing on my, on, on my year walk? And I'm supposed to interpret these images in order to tell me what's going to happen in the next year? Now you're being unfair. This isn't any easier on me. I get the distinct impression I'm making things worse every time I click on you. I don't like it when you're like this. Calm down. Year walking. I hope you're joking. You do remember what happened to my cousin, don't you? I'm presuming they died on one of these. Promise me you won't do anything foolish. I'm making an idiot of myself on the internet while wearing an oversized hat. I think we're a bit beyond that point, madam. We are not supposed to know what happens in the future. Can I go upstairs? You should hurry home to your cottage and get some rest. Oh, I... I it's getting dark. Yes, yes. Oh, right, then, then. That would appear to be, um... That would appear to be the end of that. Um, right, that that didn't explain a lot. That didn't really tell me a lot of information that I can make use of in terms of solving that box, which I presume is the next puzzle. I can't go. I can't go up this ladder or anything, can I? I don't think so. Or attack these cogs at all? No. And now I've just offended this woman horribly, and now she's kicked me out of her abode. Right. So what am I to do? Let me go back in the encyclopedia and read another one of these. I'm just going to take this off because frankly it's quite hot wearing that today. <clears throat> the Holdra is known to play a part in Norse mythology, but she is likely of even older origin from when man lived off the forest rather than the fields. The Holger was the guardian of the forest. She tended to the trees, plants, and animals. A single large tree in a grove surrounded by smaller trees was often considered the Holger's home, or even the Holger herself. In most stories, she presented herself as a beautiful young woman. This is not, however, her real appearance. Very few saw the Holger's true face and ever lived to speak of it. She was often described as a lonely and a woe-filled creature. Her relationship with humans was very complex. Why do I get the distinct impression I'm reading about the woman I just met in the in the windmill? She could enthrall a man with her beautiful song and lure him deeper and deeper into the forest, where she either wedded or killed him. The man kissed by the Holdra would become apathetic and slow. According to some accounts, the Holdra was a positive force. If a hunter was kind to the Holdra, she might blow her breath down the barrel of his rifle. <laughs> Which um should not be uh read read too much into, goodness, <clears throat> which would bless his hunt. Colliers, Colliers, I've, I've no idea what that is. <clears throat> Some people or other considered her their friend and kept fires from spreading from their charcoal clin. She also helped those who willingly offered their blood to her, but this was dangerous as the holder might drink the giver dry. Oh. Goodness, the innuendous is just incredible. The Holder was thus capable of doing both good and bad deeds. It was very hard to predict whether she would help or harm, since she played by rules only known to her. Yes, I get the distinct impression that might be the woman we've just met. But then she isn't in a forest, she's in a windmill. Hmm. What? Journal? Username and password? I don't have a username and password. You didn't ask me to set any of that up. 
Okay, I, I, I have no idea what that's all about. Can I get a hint, please? Part prologue, part two. Reveal hint one. I think I need a hint. Head home to the. Oh, you mean do as I'm told? Oh, well, in that case, if it's if it's as simple as just stop being an absolute muppet and um, should you find yourself lost, you could, yes, I've I've already worked that bit out, mate, by 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 missing the fact that I can't even follow the directions. Begs the question, however, past my driving test. Where's the, um, oh, I need to go forward now, don't I? I'll need to go, yes, forward and then backwards again. Hmm? Oh, okay, I've lost control of everything now. So let's head back inside the cottage, and perhaps we can find some more information that might, um, might explain what we're supposed to do next. Um, a wheelbarrow. Good for me. A Greek pillar. Okay. A, a, a bit of fence post. So it seems to be... It's like I'm using a flashlight. That's part of the windmill. It's like I'm using a flashlight to explore the forest and I can click on various different... Can I click on the trees? Yes, I can. So I can click on pretty much everything, it would seem. Can I click on them again to make them go away? Back to their previous state? No, I can't. Okay. So you've got many strange and bizarre items. I don't know... Oh, hang on a minute. These are forming words, aren't they? Oh... This is this is this is most sneaky. As sneakiness as this is go, this is most sneaky. That is a very nice, if admittedly utterly befuddling way of Oh, sorry, I forgot. I can't spell. A very nice, if admittedly a little bit um bizarre way of doing the introduction. Very nice indeed. Oh, we've got a little bit of colour, I see, in the uh, intervening hours while Phil slowly worked out how to use a flashlight that um, I did a bit of painting and decorating. Lovely stuff. Is the rest of the world if we, if we reveal it now? Yes, it is. So my theory about solving the box was complete rubbish. Excellent. Good to know I'm still a frickin' idiot. Okay. <laughs> in that case, let's... Um, Let's head back to the box and see if this has changed at all. Is this any different? No, it still behaves exactly as it did previously. Okay. So that doesn't um, answer any questions. Let's go and have a look at something else. Let's go up around like this and go and see what we've got in this building over here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on a minute. This wasn't here before, was it? What? this strange bird? Bizarre symbols. It's like, um, it's like an outline of a chicken's foot and then a bullet with some wings in it. Very bizarre. Right, where are we now? Uh, nearly there. Just across and back a little bit. And yes, the building should just be on the left. A little, a little sort of igloo. How fascinating. What do we have here? Okay, a little trap door. I go inside? Um, seemingly not. No. Do I need some sort of an item, like a flashlight or a torch or something, before I'm able to uh, access this? Perhaps. We can come back to that in a bit when I've um, got a slight bit better of an idea what I'm supposed to be doing with that. Let's see what else we've got in this plane. What's this? That is definitely Scandinavian, or very old Scandinavian writing, but uh, doesn't seem like I can interact with it, but that symbol might be of some importance. Yeah, it's got a little eye on there, I see the, uh, you can't see it now because I'm standing on top of it, but yeah, it's a little eye there, so that must be that stone. And what significance that has, I don't know. We've got this island right here at the back. 
on the far side of the little lake. And there doesn't seem to be anything of any consequence here. Okay, let's head up to the uh, right and go explore some of the islands that we didn't get to access before. So my guess currently would be that the the prologue bit before we had the um, before we had the name of the game come up would be my sort of considerations of doing a year walk, and then I went to see some sort of friend here in the windmill, and we discussed the concept of me doing a year walk, and now I actually am doing it. That would be my guess anyway. And again, we have another of these strange stones with many bizarre symbols on it. But again, I can't interact with it. So possibly I need to either bring something to those, or I need to read something off them. Sort of gather some information from them, as it were. What have we got here? So I wasn't able to access that. The dead tree. There was no option to go up there. But that didn't have a... Because that's only got a dot. These have all got little crosses on them. Where I'm able to make a transition, but this one doesn't. It's only got little dots on it. So perhaps I need something else. There's the same thing here with this. I don't know, maybe it's across water or something, and I need to like construct a boat, perhaps, in order to make my way across. An outhouse. I'm not convinced I want to visit an outhouse, and now I'm really convinced I don't want to visit an outhouse. Hello. Um, um, oh. Hi. Why am I able to do this? Why is this a thing that I'm doing with my life? Okay, I can't turn you to the right, but I can spin you to the left, but then you go back the way you were before. Fascinating. Utterly bizarre, but fascinating. Is that perhaps referenced in here? Horse, the church, cream... What about this? This looks more like a baby than anything else. Um, infanticide was a fairly common crime in Sweden during the 19th century and earlier. The two most common motives were that of no room for another mouth to feed, or that the child had been conceived outside of wedlock. The souls of these unfortunate children become mylings. Typically, the myling were murdered by their mothers, often unmarried women who had been left to fend for themselves. The myling would commonly be left in the woods to die, or they would be drowned by their mothers in brooks or bogs. Some mylings died at the hands of angel makers. The angel maker would typically be paid by the child's poor mother to find a decent home for the infant, and when the mother left, the infant was murdered. The most common way for the myling to haunt was through a horrible wailing sound. The myling may take the form of a ball of light similar to that of an... A, an... an Eurobloss, the Scandinavian will o' wisp, and lead the curious traveller astray. Sometimes they would cry for their mothers to breastfeed them, which would apparently set them free. One story from the. Again, I'm not going to try and pronounce that because I will offend somebody. Tells of an old farmer on his way home through the forest. He apparently was approached by a small child who follows him and says, Grandfather, Grandfather, I am so hungry. The old man tries to ignore it, but the child keeps on nagging, so finally the old man loses his patience. If you can find someone to feed you, then feed, but you won't get any milk from me. The child seems pleased and leaved. When the old man comes home, he finds his daughter lying dead on the floor, bleeding from her chest. The child has met... The child he met was the spirit of his murdered grandson. The person who helped the myling find their way to the other side was often left a gift. Anything, According to some sources, the myling would be taken in by other supernatural creatures such as the hobs, or if it had been drowned, the brook horse. Interesting. So I don't know whether that is what this is referencing, because from the face it seems to be a young child of some kind some form. Also, I thought this thing was two-headed, but no, it clearly isn't. It's just one head that spins around a lot. But this seems to be, you know, sort of roughly the shape and the, the facial structure of a child being hung in a barn, but that didn't talk about the children being hung. It talked about them being drowned. Interesting. I'm gonna go, um... Yeah, I'm gonna go south here. 
because there should be a couple of interesting things along the side here, potentially. Okay, there's another symbol here. The last one was of a sort of a bird with a sort of chicken's foot symbol, and this one is of a horse with what looks a little bit like an upside down dagger. And that symbol of the horse reminds me of this. And that first symbol was this. Interesting. So that must mean that these symbols are somehow related, so this upside down symbol is related to this brook horse thing. I don't know how that's going to come into play, but that may be of importance or interest later. So I've got a sort of little cave here or something. Oh yeah, of course, I can still go left and right in these things, can't I? I always forget that. It doesn't seem... It doesn't seem like I can do anything, though. So again, I may need some form of light or tool or some form of item that will, um, that will assist me. Not that I wanted the map. Have I been here before? There's another... S yes, because I think that was perhaps the first one I saw. Or was it that one? Was that the first one I saw? I don't remember. Let me quickly go south and then across. Yes, okay. So that's that one, which is the one with the bird on it, which is the, um, the night raven. Interesting. So each of these... Each of these rectangles with a T and then another letter after them must assign an individual symbol to each of those creatures. What I don't know, however, is how they all come together and why I need to have those symbols assigned to creatures. But perhaps that will make more sense later. Okay, so what's that? That's the, that's the hole draw, isn't it? Yes, that's the one we saw before, which is sort of a C with a line through it. Hmm. What's this? I don't remember seeing this before. Oh, I see. This is just me moving to a different part of the um, moving to a different part of the forest. Ah, oh, perhaps I should have paid a little bit more attention to that than I realised. Ah, you must be the Huldra. I've read all about you. I'm a big fan. Please don't suck me dry or whatever it is you do to the poor unfortunates that run across you. Well, I'm alive, which is something, I suppose, something I should really be grateful for. Interesting. So, was that trying to inform me that I need a key? I need to find a key that has this sort of cow's head symbol on it. And if I can find that, that might allow me through that gate. Perhaps. Yes, and then again the cow's head symbol there, which perhaps is a reference to this church. Was there anything in here like a cow's head? Yes, this... Ah, oh, the church grim. Okay, that makes sense. So that's why that's got that cow's head symbol here at the gateways and also on the keys because that's trying to inform me that, um, that it's to do with this church grim. So let's read about him or her or it and find out what we've got. Of all the creatures in Swedish folklore, the church grim was doubtlessly the most complex and certainly the most feared. Little is known of it... Then how do you know it's complex? Since it was considered to be bad luck to even speak about it. The church grim appearance varied, which could possibly be attributed to the nature of the church grim's origins. When a church was built in medieval times, an animal was sometimes burned alive under the floors, most commonly goats, since they were comparatively cheap. There have also been stories of criminals being burned alive as punishment. In other versions, the criminal's heart was cut out and placed inside an animal carcass that was sacrificed. The heart was central in many of the myths surrounding the Grimm. Stories from the south of Sweden told that if you could touch the church Grimm's heart, you could stare into the eye of creation. The church Grimm guarded the church against thieves and grave robbers, but because of it, even honest folk avoided the church at night. Some stories say if you were unlucky enough to be the last one to die during the year, you would serve the church grim the following year. And after reading about what we found in the Hulda, I dread to think what that service is going to involve. There are other stories that suggest that the church grim was not a guardian at all, but some sort of parasite that was drawn to the energy of the church. 
While there, it fed upon people's hopes, fears, and dreams. A recent and controversial theory suggests that the Church Creon was closely related to a nameless Bronze Age deity. Interesting. And this is the heart that they were referencing in some sort of a mouse hole. Interesting. So I presume then that my current objective is to find that key so that I can, um, so that I can access that gate. I was wondering whether I'd be able to move left and right in that screen, but it doesn't seem like I can. So have I been, I think I've been pretty much everywhere. So I need that key to get through that gate. There's something to do with this box and these stones with these symbols on it hold some sort of meaning as well, but I'm not sure what else there is that we need. Can I reveal the next hint? She holds the key, follow her song. And instantly I start hearing things. Okay, let me turn the uh, volume up a little bit. And let me also shut up for a little bit while I wander around to see if I can identify where she's singing from. Well, it's definitely louder now. I'm right back at the very most or southernmost point of the map. Still sounds like it's getting louder. Maybe she's on this side of the lake? Because this side didn't seem to have anything else of importance to her, but now this area is empty as well. Ah. Oh. Hi. Ma'am. Can I help you? Can you help me? Okay, I, I suppose we're going for a walk. It is, uh, it is a lovely evening for a walk. After all, the snow glistens so beautifully in the... in your demonic radiance. So is she going to lead me to the key? Perhaps? Just like all women in my life, the moment I try to get any closer to them, they run away and vanish into thin air. Where are you trying to lead me? I presume she's trying to lead me to the key, although what she's probably trying to do is lead me to my own death. Oh, I think that's good. Are we on the um, that faraway island now? Yes, we are, with the dead tree on it. Idiot. These owls are staring into my soul. Um. Okay, so by um. Viciously assaulting these innocent creatures, I can make them produce certain sounds. This one produces a, rel a relatively low tone, and this one produces a comparatively higher tone. Well, that didn't give me the key, and it didn't really answer any of my questions, but it did produce a lot more confusion. Okay, I don't think it's going to be relevant to either of these two things. I don't think we've really encountered these yet. In fact, to get the, I get the distinct impression we're going to go through various different stages of learning about the year walk, dealing with the Huldra, then each of these creatures in turn, which would make sense that this would be the last one, and that's where we end up in the, um, in the church. If you didn't really know what an owl was, and somebody described one to you down a very dodgy phone connection, you might think this and this look like an owl. Maybe if I move this thing around now it will help? I mean, I'm grasping absolute straws here, but... Maybe if I keep spinning this thing around like clockwork... Ah, yes, like clockwork. 
Just had to spin it around enough. And that's stretching out its very rickety bones. Oh! Sorry, I probably should have been paying more attention to you, um, shouldn't I? Sorry, I don't have much of an appreciation for the finer arts. And it's gone again. Please tell me I don't need to go back and do that. Um, like, fix that. <laughs> or else, um, you know, uh, tell, me, tell me I don't need to leave her like that. So have you changed at all? No, you are the same. Okay. I mean, these two things could be entirely separate and have no relation to each other whatsoever. But let me see if I, um... If I get this thing running again, and sit through its dance again, um... It's a perfectly acceptable dance, madam. It just, you know, it could do with a few more moves to it. Kitty aunt, this thing is... Kitty aunt! This time, if I don't touch its face, if I could learn a bit of, you know, rules of personal space and all, and I leave it with its blood-stained mouth, and then I go back around the world and explore it again. Maybe something will have changed, or something will have activated somehow. Hmm. I thought... It, it, it struck me after playing Sanitarium, that maybe I needed to recreate the song, but it sounds like it has far too many tones in order to replicate the song with just the two notes that I can get from the two owls. However, what I also noticed is that she pulls up her left and right arm as she dances. So perhaps she's indicating in what order, like making a sequence of which owl I need to click on. Like she goes left, then right, then left, then right. I don't know whether she just did left, right, left, right, left, right, or maybe there was more of a sequence there. Let me play it again and make a note of how she moves. Yeah, she doesn't just do left, right, left, right, left, right. She does left, right, left, three right, two lefts. So maybe if I return to the owls and I input that sequence in, it will open the door. So left, right, left. Right, 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 left, left. Look at that, I worked out something on my own for once. Which should now allow us to... Now allow us to, um... Give us some trombone advice, possibly. No, this should allow us to pursue the whole draw. Okay, so we have. Do I have my map again? No, I don't. Okay, so I don't have a map of this area. It seems to be a. Almost like a graveyard, judging from the stones. I don't know the sounds of those creepy crawlies. Can I go backwards at all, or not? It doesn't seem like I can go backwards, but there are many different avenues for going forward. Unless I'm just on a circle and I'm going round and round the same ones again and again and again. Which seems quite likely, given the fact that I can't find the edge of this. Let me keep heading forward for a little while. Is it the music? Is it, again, is it you know, keeping with the sort of the auditory theme of it all? Because it seems to make noises when I approach each of the lights, and it seems to make a sort of a different noise for each one. So is that perhaps like a specific sequence? Because that didn't sound very positive, for want of better terminology. 
No, we didn't like that noise either. See that? That sounds inherently positive. I don't know why, but it does. No, see, I didn't like that. Yeah, so it's like on the first one, it wants like the second from like the second left one. So let me get a little bit more paper because I'm not going to be able to remember this. So let me try um, finding a sort of a sequence for this that might work. Being slightly tone deaf, this isn't going to help in terms of me uh, working out which which notes it is. Maybe it's like which notes work best with the piece of music it's playing? Because in each plane it seems to play a sort of a different type of tune. It doesn't like the first one from the left. What about the second one from the left? That doesn't sound very positive either. No, and it wasn't the one we wanted. So let me try the third from the left. That's the first. That's the second. It doesn't like either of those. Let's try the third. Yes. So on the next plane, you want the third from the left. Yeah. That time I liked the third going rightwards instead of going left. So I think, again, it is about the tones, and it seems to play different music on each sort of plane that you're in. So my guess would be that you know, it's... I don't know, maybe it's the tone of that music, is the tone of the portal, you know, like the way forward you want to go through. Because, I mean, I'm doing this on the basis of trial and error, but that's just because I'm completely and utterly tone deaf. Mm hmm. Second to the left on that last one. Hi. Well, that's what happens when you fail your music exam, kids. You get bitten. Did I fail, or was that script? Oh, well, at least the dead tree isn't quite so dead anymore, so I suppose that's one positive. And now I have the key. Excellent. Can I have this, please, before it runs off with somebody else? Yes. Good. Excellent. I'm not entirely sure what I did or what I achieved, but I have the key. Are you gone now? Yes, you are. What a coincidence. Okay. So that at least means that that bit of it is now done, perhaps. So maybe this allowed me to access the cemetery. I use this. Do I have, like, some sort of item bar? Is that what my journal was for? No, presumably not. Um, do I... I have the key now because it doesn't seem like I, I can't go forward and clicking on the gate isn't letting me do anything so did I actually get the key or did the key like fall apart and I didn't get it and it's gone somewhere else and I've got to keep chasing it I don't know the miling and the brook horse yes that's what it was talking about. those are the next two creatures here aren't they the brook horse and the miling yeah Okay, I'm going to have to confess. The key turned into water, where could it be? Oh, I probably should have realised that. Yes, it did turn into sort of blue drops, didn't it? Where could it be? So, presumably, somewhere wet. Well, there was like a like a lake here. The brook. Ah, oh, and it's talking about a brook horse as well. Okay, so I'm guessing it's back here, rather than the very back of the map. So let me head back that way. I suppose it makes sense that it wouldn't work instantly if we've got that key because then that would just let us straight into the churchyard and we'd be able to deal with our um what was it called the the church grim yes which would skip us over these three kids here and it would be unfair not to uh cast them uh fully can i interact with you at all oh hello you're a very dapper gent yes indeed i'd quite like that Okay, four ghosts. Um, I pick this ghost. No, I don't. Okay. 
What are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to tell me by these? What is that supposed to mean? Hang on a second. Why has my encyclopedia gone? You probably can't quite see this, but the encyclopedia has gone from just being a, a black book on a grey outline to having bloodstains on it. And now this has blood all over it. Is there any extra information here? Um. Ah. Hello. Oh, so those aren't... Well, I mean, they are kind of ghosts, but now they're sort of dead. Sort of dead babies, it would seem. Ah, oh, yes, and it said they were taken in by the brook horse. That would make sense that these two are sort of together. I have one of these babies. I see. So do I need to go and find three other dead babies and bring them back to this well-dressed horse? It's not a phrase I thought I was going to say when I got out of bed this morning. But then again, when I get out of bed in the morning, I don't think to myself, hmm, I wonder what phrases I'm going to say today. After this this much wildness on, on this site, you'd think I probably would have started asking myself that. But never mind. Let me wander around for a little bit and see if I can find any of these children that I'm looking for. Because they must be somewhere. I doubt it's going to be quite as simple as just walking around and finding them. Maybe it is going to be just as simple as walking around and finding them. Because there's a blood trail here. Is it something to do with this? Can I sort of move you forward and tip you over? Okay, so is this carriage moving along? And then... Yes, here we are. And then there was some sort of accident, they tripped over a... Um, wh what do I do with this? Is a question many men have asked upon being handed a baby. Um... Oh, I can... I've really got to get better about remembering the fact that I can walk. If being such a basic to human existence, you'd think I'd remember it. I see. I was trying to sort of pick it up and put it in my inventory, for want of a better way of saying it. I just pick it up and I carry it with me, and yes, and then I take it to the horse. I see. I see. I see. I see. Okay, it's starting to make a little bit more sense now, so I need to look for two other sites of their deaths. What else did it say about the methods in which they were killed? Because that might reveal where I might find them. I remember it said about them being drowned. It talk, talks about them taking on the spirit of a ball of light. So maybe if I see a ball of light, I should remember to look out for it. And maybe them calling out as well. Oh, here we are. This uh, this might be a clue. It seems like it's dropping down. So maybe I can go up these stairs, perhaps? No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, is there... What else here could I make use of? Can I turn these around by any chance? No? Okay, I was thinking maybe I could turn the, um... You know, the, the blades of the windmill. Turn them around in order to maybe sort of drop the baby down if it's stuck on the roof up there. inside. Oh, I can turn these! Yes, and these might turn these. Yes, I reckon the baby is going to be hanging on to one of these blades, and if I turn this around enough, eventually they'll appear on screen. Did I miss it? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Crying out loud. I forgot this was advertised as a horror game. Kitty Yards. Ah. Yes, I see you. It's alright, I've got you now. I mean, it's not alright because you're dead and you're haunting me and my shoulder hurts after that jump scare, but other than that, everything's fine. Oh, okay, I think I've accidentally stumbled across the, uh, the, the final location while trying to make my way back to the, um, the river. So I think we found the last one. Must be in that sort of that vault we found. Okay. 
Also, is it by coincidence that he's dressed a tiny bit like an undertaker? Or is it just his association with dead bodies that's making me think he's dressed like an undertaker? Okay, let's head in here. Okay, so now this is locked. With a couple of with a couple of letters. How do I So I can move them back a little bit? Is there somewhere I can change these letters at all? U and N. What do U and N have to do with this? Because it doesn't seem like I can change these letters or or do anything with them. Because it's this bit of metal here in the middle that's stopping this from going back any further. If I could remove this block, that would let that move further back. Oh. I literally just pressed U and N. You'd think I'd have worked that out a little quicker. Never mind, little chap. It is alright. I have got a friend for you to meet, which is not a statement you ever want to say to a child if you want your career in entertainment to go down the um, the wazoo. Right, I brought your children back. You can adopt them and have a lovely little family. I haven't spoke too soon, they've all died of frostbite. Why do I get the impression this one's going to disappear as well? Oh, and now they've appeared as the Will-O-Wisp things. Yep, there goes the raven. Kitty. <laughs> okay, my treasure has been stolen once again. So this time I need to um, find a place where a bird might live, and that might give me a clue as to where um, it might be. So I'm going to guess here. Because that has R-A-V-N. Which is very nearly how you spell the word raven. So I'm going to guess that's got something to do with this raven. Um. Oh, okay. And, 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 and now we're all done with this. Okay, I can take this fire with me. I brought this fire from home. I'm taking it with me. Okay, I must be able to use this on something because I can sort of leave it behind, can't I? It seems to sort of drift when I do that, so maybe it returns back to where it came from originally, so I don't lose it. So it's very funky music, but um, it's a little disturbing. I haven't even still got the volume turned up like I did before. So where was the... Um, I'll have to put this down and check the map for a moment. I want to get, like, up here, so I want to go right up and then up again. Okay. Because it must be to do with that hill. Because the church grim must be at the church. And that's an... Im th this hill isn't an area we've used yet. Oh! I can use the fire to light my way! And not really get any answers to my questions. Okay. That's a symbol I remember seeing on one of the trees. That I do not remember seeing. But I didn't see all of the trees. That's got two dots next to it. What's this bucket? Is this bucket of any importance? That's got two dots next to it, and that's got five. Okay, I don't think there's anything else here. No, the rest of this seems empty. So let me look around. I remember seeing this. I don't know what, what, what image it was connected to, though. And I'll look for this one as well, which is like a six-pointed star. I don't know how the numbers are going to come into any account, but let me have a look and find them, and then we'll have a little bit more information to try and solve this with. So the dagger is the horse. The upside down dagger is the horse, which is connected to the two dots. So two dots, the dagger, and the horse are all somehow connected with each other, though how, I have no idea. What other stones are there that I haven't looked at? I don't know if I've looked at that one. I think that's the only one I haven't seen, though, so that's probably my best bet as to which one is the uh, the funny-shaped star.
Hang on a minute. Okay, that's also to do with the baby. Is that because they were related to each other in like the last segment of the story that we did? And that's why they've both got the same symbol for them. Yeah, so that was that one. But I haven't been able to find any with the star on it. Because that one's the horse and that one's the baby. One of the, I think that one's the raven. I don't remember what that one is. Oh yeah, that's the um, the whole troll, whatever her name was. And that's that again, isn't it? <laughs> and again, I completely forgot that I'm able to move around more if I move left and right. What is wrong with me today? Okay, so what else can I find by looking around? So there's the... There's the little chicken's foot thing. I don't know why that's what springs to mind when I see that shape. It looks more like a, a bushel of wheat. A stylized one. So that's the three. Is it some form of ordering, perhaps? Because that three... Yeah, that was to do with the, the raven, wasn't it? Because it was like the bullet with the wings coming out of it. Is what I initially thought it was. And there's a dead bird there. That's not very pleasant. Um, okay, I can't go any further left. So if I head right again, that's got five symbols on it. I don't think... No, that, that must be a symbol because it's got one dot on it. So that's the one dot. Which is a most bizarre symbol. I haven't seen that anywhere. So that's like the first one, because it's got one dot, and then the, the upside down dagger, which is associated with both the brook horse and the uh, myling, the dead babies, those have the number two, or two dots next to them. Then the raven, which is the sort of the... Oh, I suppose it's a bit like a pitchfork, I suppose, isn't it? Or the bushel of wheat, or the chicken's foot, or whatever you want to say it is, has got the three dots next to it. So we'd be missing... Okay, that's got six dots next to it. This star had five dots next to it. Okay, again, I'm just going to keep writing down everything I find in the hopes of, uh, in the hopes of slowly explaining uh, what's going on. So that symbol has five dots next to it, and this one has six dots next to it, which is sort of a square with a line going through it. Is there one with four dots? Because then that would give us a symbol for each number between one and six. This doesn't look very stable. Is this something I can interact with, perhaps? Okay. Again, are things going to just be easier than I thought they were going to be? Is there not actually a puzzle there? Oh, it wasn't a boat. It was an underground passage. As you could have guessed, Phil, from reading the word underground. I'm not being very bright today, am I? Okay, so maybe there wasn't a puzzle there, and that was just a bit of sort of flavour stuff. And again, with the dead birds. And more of these mysterious stones that I don't know the, that I don't know the meanings of. I don't think the stones are related to those symbols, but they might be. Am I supposed to do anything with... Oh, hell oh you weren't dead, you were just having a little sleep. That's nice. And by clicking on you, I can make you yawn. Well, that's a heck of a talent. Win a television show with a thing like that. There's nothing else here, and there's no other options for me to go forwards or back. There's just this bird. I don't think I can... No, moving the mouse around isn't doing anything. It's got to be something to do with this, surely. These rocks, these these big stones, they have to be something. They have to have some sort of meaning. How many are there? There's only three. There's only three of those stones with the eyes next to them. I never actually read the thing about the Night Raven, so we should probably do that because that might help give me a clue. 
carrion birds were deeply linked with misfortune and death in the Scandinavian folklore. The night raven was certainly no exception. It was described as a large bird with a sharp beak, sometimes with holes in its wings. If a person gazed through those holes, he would become ill. Other stories told of a giant skeleton bird that could never satisfy its hunger. Travellers foolish enough to be out at night risked being devoured by the terrible bird, especially at festivals such as Christmas or New Year's Eve, when I happen to be performing my little night walk. Or year walk, rather. The night raven was also described as an ordinary raven, but if it landed on a house, somebody would die shortly with a terrible fever. Overall, the night raven was strongly associated with disease. When farmers sent their children out to collect wild birds' eggs, they would be careful not to pick the eggs of the night raven. Those eggs would be considered deadly. If the child was unsure, he could knock on the egg three times and say, Out with the evil spirit. If the egg belonged to the night raven, it would turn black. The night raven not only infested the eggs, it also possessed birds, preferably the carrion birds. According to some sources, the night raven was a spirit of an evil, greedy man who could not, who had not been burned properly. The greed manifested itself in the night raven's fondness for shiny objects. Interesting. And here we have ourselves a dark bird. It's much smaller than a raven. But it opens its mouth. Maybe if I find some sort of a shiny object, I can give it to the bird, and that will placate it and make it give me the key back. I presume that I can't go down and get that... Th this with me anymore, can I? No, I can't bring it with me. I hold the mouse down, but nothing happens. So maybe there is a puzzle here of some kind. Yes, here we are. So the... The, um... The C with a line through it is the is the number four, which was associated with one of the creatures in here, um, the Huldra, I believe. So may maybe there's an item in here somewhere that I can use for that, because I, I don't know how I would input any sort of solution, even if I were able to work one out, with reference to these different symbols and their different numbers, because they all seem to be referencing different sorts of creatures. Or different things that I've seen, with the exceptions of some like this, which I can't identify at all. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. So I can make lines, seemingly not lines that cross each other. How do I reset this? Can I reset this somehow, or have I just screwed it up enormously? If I, like, change the screens and come back, well, that fits. Yes, it did. Okay. Okay, so let's slow down and think about this a little bit. So we've got one of these stones, which is... Actually, I thought it was one of these stones, but it clearly isn't. It's clearly a completely different item. The rune stone, yes. So I can make symbols with this. I have absolutely no idea what it is I'm supposed to achieve with this. I don't think I can make any of the symbols that I saw in that underground area, I don't think I can make any of them with this six dot grid. So perhaps this is for something else entirely and this isn't relevant to the, um, the bird. Oh. What I can make, however, self-evidently, I, I, I don't know what it is about me today. I'm just missing all the really obvious clues. These stones have symbols on them. And these symbols I can reproduce in the rune stone. I 
I don't know what order I'm going to need to do them in. But I think they have varying numbers of eyes on each one. So maybe th this is the first one because it's got one eye on it. So let me go back to the other two stones and copy down the symbols that are on them. And if I recreate those three symbols in the correct order on the rune stone, perhaps that will achieve something. Okay. So... This has three eyes on it, and each of the other stones has an individual eye on it. Were the eyes in different places? I don't think so. I think they were always at the top of each one. So without knowing what order I'm going to need to put them in, and assuming that there is an order, I'm going to do the southernmost one, and then the middle one, and then the, um, the northernmost one. So let me try... Yes, that has lit up an eye, okay. So you kind of have to do these in one unbroken chain, as it were. You can't, like, draw part of it and then go off and then draw a different part of it. You have to kind of start at one end and work your way along until you reach the, um, the other end of the symbol. There we go. That achieved some... So it's doing left, right, left, right, and these sort of double-headed arrows. Okay, now we've got a second right. This time a left. And another right. So it's like the bird puzzle again. And this has been reset. So that's given me some information of a sequence of left, right, left, right, right, left, right. But how does that help? What do I do with that information? Where do I use that? Where do I input that? What do I do with that? Because that doesn't help me with the bird. Evening, mate. I suppose I should have taken the touch the fiendish bird hint a little bit more literally and not read into their magpie-esque proclivities for shiny objects. Do I need to click this a lot as well? Oh no, I can just take this with me. Oh well, I mean, I guess I suppose we've run out of other people to chase, haven't we? So uh, I suppose it would make sense that there is nobody else to... Um, to steal this from us, which means we can just take it to the gate and unlock it. Excellent. And maybe it's in the the, the, the graveyard where I can start to make use of um, this left, right, left, right sequence that I have found. Sorry, I, I apologise that I had to look that up, but I was utterly stumped, which is a deceptively simple solution to the puzzle, but for some reason, once again, I was being dumb. Please forgive me. Okay, so the door is open now, and we can enter the graveyard. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this looks complicated. Okay, what can I click on? What can I interact with? Nothing, seemingly. I can't go left and right. Can I... Oh. Okay, each of these have up to four dots under them. Good thing I have all of this written down from earlier. So the raven had three dots next to it. The dagger, which was representing the horse and the baby, had two dots next to it. And the... no, that's not the... the, 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 the baby had two. So the gate is open. Oh, it's got a little face on it. Yeah, a little face. How ugly, adorable, and how perfectly. No mind. 
that is cool. That is, that's a cool little touch. Okay, so I can't just go in through the fr Oh. At least I worked it out on my own this time. Okay, let me go back and to the front, sort of reset it all. So if I do, because it's got these double-headed arrows here, if I do a leftward circle, so the little cow's head appears, and then I do a rightward circle, there we are, and then another left one, thank you, and then two to the right, And then one to the left. And then one to the right. This does actually make a little bit of sense because I do remember reading at some point it said something about moving around the church grounds in intricate ways. So perhaps that's what it's referencing. Could you stop it with the jump scares? Am I supposed to do something? Grope your noggin? Unbutton your coat? Comb your hair? Clean your ears out? I don't know. I can't move. <laughs> did, I, did I miss anything here? Hmm. Did I miss anything in this book? I didn't think so. Idiot. Oh! Um. It's too late now. Well, it has been going on for an hour and 41 minutes and 28 seconds, so it doesn't surprise me that we've been here for a while. Now the horsey, again. It can't be changed. It can, because of the glorious, wondrous gifts of editing. It can be changed. Okay, and now the house. I did that wrong, didn't I? I think I'm supposed to do them in the correct number. Um, four, five, six. Yes, there we are. I did it right that time. Ah, oh, and the myling again. Poor dead babies. The decision has already been made. Oh dear, it's like going through the job market again. Um. Okay, it's like you turn it around one way and then one of them disappears and then you go the other way around and then another one goes away. I still have no idea what's going on and what any of this means. I thought this was supposed to be telling me about the future. 
You must stop coming here. Yes, it really is like the job market. Yes, I know you've turned me down for 17 positions, but I'm desperate, mate. <laughs> and we're back with our cow friend again. Many people do. I've kind of gotten used to that fact. Hmm. Is that it? Ah. Oh. And now it is a lovely spring morning. We survived the night, and um. And now it's not New Year's Eve any anymore. It's New Year's Day. That day famous in all of the calendars for being really bright and sunny, and not just being really miserable and drizzly. Or at least it certainly is around these parts. Ah. You're the one from the beginning, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I think you are. I remember your coat. Is that it? At the end. Yes, it is. My voice is really hoarse after an hour and 45 minutes and 30 seconds. Hmm. That was absolutely bizarre. I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> Maybe this makes a bit more sense if you're a little bit more au fait with Swedish folklore. I mean, it's very nice. The method of doing it with, like, different little stages that you can go forwards and backwards in. I seem to remember seeing a, a system like that before in a game somewhere, but I can't remember from where, so it was probably years ago, or I've completely forgotten it, or it was just utterly imagined, which is, um... Uh, never particularly unlikely with a mind as crazy as mine. But most of those puzzles were actually quite good. They were quite clever. Um, they were very sort of subtle instead of being abstract, which I think is a much better way of doing a puzzle, to do it subtly rather than abstractly, like with the, the little doll's arms that were going up left and right in order to tell you about the um, which order to hit the owls in. Was it all down? Yes, I did. I wrote literally all of it down trying to solve it. Everything that happened. It can be changed. Okay. Let's deliver the message. Well, look at the video. Does that count? The journal. Oh, yeah, the journal I completely forgot about. The secret is hidden. Well, it wouldn't be much of a secret if it was out in plain sight, would it? North of the mill. What? You couldn't go north of the mill. South of the brook. You couldn't go south of the brook either. Remember. A secret. North of the mill, south of the brook. Are you telling me like one of them I get the username and one of them I get the password and that lets me open the journal? Perhaps. Walk again? You know what, mate? I'm sorry to say, but my feet are tired. So I don't quite know how to say no. But, um, I think I'm being sent on another walk anyway. Aren't I? Yes, I am. Well, never mind. This was very impressive. This was very, very strange and bizarre. And a lovely little change of pace from the normal stuff we do. But, um... Yeah, as I was saying about the puzzles, very nice to see subtle puzzles instead of abstract puzzles that do come together. I'm still not sure about that raven, when you just have to click on it a lot, but I don't know. I, just, I guess I just got slightly too transfixed upon the whole thing of their interest in shiny items, which I read in the book. But having the book with the folklore on it, which gave you some clues, along with the hints, 
was a very nice way of putting it together, in a way of helping you along with the story and helping you along with the sequence of events if you did get a little bit stuck. I'm now also realising that I never repainted the house and it didn't go red, I simply imagined that it wasn't red before, and now... never mind. But yeah, you can't go south of... What? The coal... Okay, that's what you meant by north of the mill and south of the book. Okay, so maybe these are the username and password to the journal. So, I suppose this can be you know, a little last final thing we do. So one of them's 1894, what's this? Can I access the journal now? Yes, I can. Okay. So let me try the coal M68 and then, uh, sorry, 1894. Sign in. No? Did I? No. Okay, that isn't right. I thought that's what was here. Oh, there's no C. Where did I imagine that C from? I have no idea. Probably I mistook the A for it. Okay, sorry. Let me try that again. I'll spell it correctly this time. Sorry. Hello, new system. Uh, yes, hello, lovely to meet you. Testing photo uploaded, it works. You'll probably write here more often. You haven't written anything yet, mate. What about every Swedish... What the hell? Are these, like... These are, like, production notes, aren't they? These are like production notes, aren't they? About the construction of the game. About things that the people that were researching this game for. Yes. The people that were researching this game and coming up with the ideas for it and, and, and studying into the folklore that would be referenced in it. These are notes that they wrote as time went by about the stuff they did. Fascinating. That's absolutely fascinating. Um, that is a very, very nice way of doing it. Anyway, um, sorry, sorry, sorry. This has either been an enormously long video, or has been, or I don't know how much, is, how much of it is going to be edited out, but um, or possibly this has been cut into two parts. I don't know. But anyway. This was Year Walk. This was absolutely fascinating. I'm not convinced I would... Con Is it a horror game? I mean, it's got a few jump scares in it. And it's got a few sort of disturbing themes, as it were. I don't know if I'd consider it a horror game, but what I would consider it as is a good game. It is a very good game. It was a very enjoyable experience. I very much enjoyed doing it. Thank you very much for joining me this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Look after each other, and good night. Particularly look after your voices. If there was horse in mine, I am off to have some... I don't know, something soothing, some hot chocolate or something. I don't know, something to calm this voice down. You'd think if my voice hurt so much, I might shut up, mightn't I? Never mind. Good night. Oh, no, that's not what I do. I turn the recording off, don't I? I don't quit the hit the quit button. Kitty, aren't. I'm really not doing very well today, am I? <laughs>